Hi everyone, my name is April and this is Thrifted Transformations, the show where I go thrifting for old clothing and transform them into something new. So before we get started, I just wanted to say that we are so close to hitting 1 million subscribers. Don't stop. If you're new to this channel, I make DIY fashion and thrifted transformation videos every week. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you guys are already subscribed, share this channel with your friends and your family and get them to subscribe as well because I'll need all the help I can get to hit 1 million by the end of this year. Let's get started. In this episode of Thrifted Transformations, I found this large plaid kilt for $5 from Savers and the foresty colors and leather buckles really inspired me to make a cape coat. I'm so excited because I've always wanted a cape coat and never made one before, but the problem is the skirt doesn't have enough fabric to make one in my size. But lucky for me, I have an adorable tiny human that can live those dreams for me. First things first, we have to draft our cape pattern. If you guys remember episode 35, I drafted a pattern for Harper's dress, so I'm using that same pattern as a guide since I know it'll already fit her. For those of you that don't have a pattern to use, grab a shirt from your closet to trace. Trace the half pattern onto a piece of paper and make sure the center front line is how long you want your coat to be. Next, draw a straight line down from the outside corner of the shoulder, then finish off the bottom with a straight line. Next, cut it out and then slash three lines starting from the bottom all the way up to but not through the neckline. This is called the slash and spread method, commonly used at flare to garments. The more you spread the pieces, the more flared out your top will be. Tape down the spread pieces onto another sheet of paper and then connect the gaps along the bottom. Make any adjustments to the shoulder seam and neckline if needed. Cut out your new pattern piece before adding seam allowance and tape it down onto another sheet of paper to draft the sides of the cape. Trace the side of the pattern onto the paper and decide how flared out you want your cape to be. You can make it A-line shaped or a half circle shape. It really depends on the look you want. I made mine a three-quarter circle. Notice how the line I drew from the shoulder is very straight. Well, you want to round it out a little bit to shape the shoulders nicely. If you have enough material, you can cut the sleeves on fold and just sew a dart to round out the shoulders so you won't have a side seam. But since I need to save as much material as I can, I need to cut out four separate side pieces. On the front pattern pieces, make sure to mark where the armholes will be. To make the center back cape, I just copied the center front cape and raised the neckline. Cut the center back on fold so you have one full piece. And once all your pattern pieces are finalized, add your seam allowances and then we can cut them out on fabric. After all your pieces are cut out, make sure to mark the armhole opening on the front cape pieces so you know where to stop and start sewing. Then sew all the side capes onto the center front and back pieces. Once you have full front and back capes, baste them right sides together and sew the sides of the cape. Now 
An additional feature I wanted on this jacket was a Peter Pan collar. To make the collar, I traced the front and back neckline and designed the shape. I cut out one collar out of the plaid fabric and another one out of some brown fur I bought from Joann's. Baste the two collars right sides together and sew along the outside. Turn the collar right sides out and now you have what looks like a mini neck pillow. To attach the collar to the cape, I sandwiched it in between the two layers and sewed along the neckline. To prevent the lining from sticking out, understitch it down. Next, turn the cape inside out and sew the center front together. Next, fold the bottom of the cape under and line up all the seams. Then, I hand sew it to the lining so the stitches won't be visible on the outside. Before hemming, I searched the raw edges with my overlock machine. I also had a 1 inch seam allowance down the center front, so I'm going to fold it back and hand sew it down as well. To close up the armhole opening, I press the raw edges and hand sew the lining and facing together. I'm not sure if this was the easiest way to finish the armhole, so if you have a better direction, please share with us down in the comments. Afterwards, I even went ahead and top stitched it down. Lastly, we need to sew the leather straps back on and the easiest way for me to hold them in place was with some magic tape. There's already holes from the previous stitching, so I made sure to not sew in the same place because I didn't want to expand those holes. Here is the final transformation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Thrifted Transformations. I love my baby cousin Harper so much. So if you guys love her too, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well so we can hit 1 million subscribers by the end of this year. And leave me a comment down below telling me what video you want to see next. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!